Hi, it's Mark with Ableton Daily. Creating the Wally voice sound in Ableton Live. This is inspired by the movie Wally by Pixar, and Ben Burt was the original sound designer for the sound. He did an extraordinary job on the movie, just fantastic. I'm a bit of a movie sound effects kind of guy. I like to recreate sounds with software that I hear in movies, and, and so I decided, hey, let's do the Wally sound, and I'm going to show you how I made the sound. Uh, but basically, I just recorded myself saying Wally. 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 And then I dragged this clip into Sampler and then turned it into this. Wally. I've also added a resonator onto this chain here. Here's the sound without the resonator. Wally. And you can also turn on both the resonator and the frequency shifter to create some other interesting sounds. Of course, this moves away further from the original Wally sound itself, uh, but you can also create other interesting robot sounds and different other little sound effects that you can use for videos and, and movies. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is basically start from scratch. And if you don't have Sampler, I highly recommend it. Uh, please go check it out at the Ableton website at ableton.com. What you'll need is a blank MIDI channel. And I've just inserted a new MIDI track right here. Just right click and choose insert MIDI track. Make sure that the track is armed. Find Sampler and just go ahead and click and drag Sampler into the plugins Dropbox. And then drag the source sound that you recorded, drag it right in a sampler, and here it is. And you should be able to play the keys on the MIDI controller. Wally. I will increase the volume a little bit here to make this a little bit louder. Wally. First thing, I'll, what I'll do is adjust the sample start and sample endpoints for this sample. Now, my settings might be a little bit different than yours because the timing or duration of your source clip maybe a different length than mine. And so the the numbers in here might not exactly match up for your sample, but you can just generally get the idea. What I'm trying to do here is just make my sample start immediately when I press the keys on the controller. Wally, Wally. So we don't have that space in front of it. So I'm just making a few adjustments here. Same with the sample endpoint, which is right over here. I just want to leave, leave just a little bit of space behind the sample. And then I will go ahead and change the sustain mode to this constant looping sustain. So if I press the key on the keyboard, Wally, Wally, Wally. the sample will just keep looping over and over and over again. And that's really good. We're going to set this loop start and loop end region that we're going to use to modulate the sound in creating that kind of that computerized mechanical sound that, you know, for the Wally voice. So what I'll do is just grab this loop start and just grab these little flags and make create a narrow loop range, something like this. Sampler can modulate this loop range over the sample, but the loop range is just a little bit wide right now. So I'm just going to adjust this. Okay, that's good. I will go ahead and click and just to give you another example of on how this will sound, I will hold down the key on the MIDI controller and then drag this uh, loop brace around here and you can hear the difference in the sound. Do you hear that popping sound? By having the snap on down here, this will allow the markers to snap to zero crossing, which is just at the very beginning of the waveform. And this results in a much smoother sound. And I'll go ahead and play again. I will go ahead and readjust these markers here just to make sure everything looks really good. Okay, I like this. So that's pretty much the sound you'll want to hear at this point. All right, let's go ahead and move on. 
come over here to the modulation tab inside sampler and turn on auxiliary and we will be performing an auxiliary modulation and so i will be changing a right here which is our first parameter that we will be modulating and then also a second parameter which will be for b but for a i want you to select loop start and that's right up here and then for the loop start value enter 100 press enter and then for b i want you to select loop length right here loop length and then for this i made it a nice even number for you just enter in 50. all right the attack by default is just way too quick and we can hardly hear the effect at all if i press the key on the midi controller wally we just hear the sound and if i hold it down even more wally it starts to loop this little section region that we've created and this is not exactly the you know the sound that we're looking for we want this auxiliary attack to come in much slower so we can hear the result of the loop start and loop length modulation so i will just increase this attack a little bit quite a bit wally ah now we can start to hear that effect listen to that wally for the timing of the attack increase this to somewhere around two and a half seconds uh somewhere around here is just fine wally and for this decay you can just increase this wally. make it pretty long wally and sustain i wouldn't worry about that too much uh the peak you can just make sure this is 100 percent and i just want to keep this really simple the uh, time and release is very interesting and quite important in how the sound changes when you're actually playing the keys on your midi controller the pressure of how hard you're hitting the keys and how soft you're you're playing the keys and this will determine the speed of the envelope and in return this will make the sound sound like it's speeding up or slowing down depending how hard you press the keys i'll go ahead and give you an example in an extreme case i will just put 50 uh, percent for the time and velocity setting and if i press the key lightly so you can see we're starting to modulate the sample very slowly going up the envelope it's almost like it's globally slowing down the envelope and slowing down the modulation all at the same time but if i press harder on the key watch this wally 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 so i'm really pushing hard on the key now wally and you can see the sound the the modeling and the animation of the sound is much much faster so that's something to look at right here so for this setting what i'm going to do later is attach this onto a macro knob so for right now just enter in 22 percent since that's the value that I used originally and everything else is really good. So let's go ahead and move on here. The next big part of the Wally sound is the pitch. Now this can be a little bit tricky when working with the pitch envelope. You'll need to adjust the envelope to match and fit the letters that are being pronounced in the word Wally. And your source sound might be a little bit different than mine. So my settings might not necessarily match or work with your sound or your samples uh, so what I'm gonna do here is just basically set it up the way I did when I first started the sound before the video it also helps to listen to the actual Wally sound that was used in the movie uh, you can go to like YouTube and then type in Wally voice sound and you'll find something and hear the sound Wally you know and if you listen to the sound closely you'll notice that as soon as he starts to pronounce the a in the Wally voice, the pitch goes up. So it's like Wally, and it kind of does that. So by knowing that, and then that will help you in modeling your own sound. For the amount of the pitch envelope, let's go ahead and move this to 24. So just go ahead and enter in 24, which just is a couple octaves up. This will allow us to pitch up to two octaves or pitch up to 24 semitones. So I will come through here and adjust my sound. I'm going to type in some values here. Now, if you look very closely on the pitch envelope, you have these little handles in between the different parameters. And this allows you to create different slope styles. So you could have the sound roll in or roll up. 
or roll out. Wow. So for this tutorial, you'll want to roll up to the letter A. I'll go ahead and play this. Wow. And here is the slope, the envelope slope adjustment. I will push this all the way up. You can see what I'm doing here. <laughs> it starts to get kind of small on the screen, so it's really hard to see everything. Wow. There we go. Something like that. Sort of close to what we're looking for there. So just listen to it and adjust this pitch slope here so it matches the words and the, the letters that are being pronounced in the word. Wow. Pretty close. If I want to lower that peak a little bit. Wow. Okay, so that's basically pretty close to the original sound. Here's the little trick here is that you'll want to sync the time and velocity of the pitch envelope to the time and velocity of the auxiliary modulation envelope right here. And you can actually do this by assigning both of these parameters to one macro. And I'll show you how to do that. And so uh, I'll just go through here and I'm going to change this time and velocity to 22%, which is the same value as the velocity or time velocity in the modulation settings right here. So same as, as 22%. And to get those macros, well, all we have to do is just group this sampler instrument. And I can just select right click here and select group. And then I will pop out the macros right here. And so for the auxiliary time and velocity, I can right click on this and choose map to macro one. Now this is going off the screen just a little bit. Down on this menu, you'll find a, a, just map to macro one is the one you want to choose. And then over here on the pitch envelope, you'll want to do the same thing. So just go ahead and right click on time and velocity and select map to, and then it should say time and velocity. And so basically you have both parameters attached to one macro knob. I'm going to make a few little adjustments here. Wah, 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 wah. We've attached this macro onto these two settings that the timing is never off. No matter how hard you press the key on your controller, it will always be correct. And if I press harder, wowie, wowie, wowie. Okay, so we pretty much have the sound that we're looking for. And then let's go ahead and add the resonator onto this channel. So inside the audio effects folder, and just come down here and drag in resonator or just expand this. And I think I used like Moscow or something just as a default setting with uh, with no width. So I'll change the width down to 0%. Wow. Wow. The resonator, why I used it was to create more of like a metal sound, almost like, uh, you know, somebody's talking inside of a metal box or something. And it sounds like the key is probably a little bit too low. I'm going to change the root key down to G which is a G2 octave. Okay, so that's probably closer to the Wally sound. Anyway, you can go in here and play around with this, and it's really a lot of fun. My name's Mark. This is Ableton Daily. Hey, if you like what you see, please subscribe or send me a comment and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next lesson. Take care. Wow.